Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. I want to share some updates with you about the war in Ukraine. Russia continues to bomb and assault the, con- the country. Um, and Ukrainian authorities reported today that Russia struck another medical facility. This time it was a children's and maternity hospital. They say that the facility was completely destroyed and that the attack left 17 people injured, including pregnant women. It was also reported that the Chernobyl nuclear facility had been disconnected from the country's power grid, and they believe that Russian forces were to blame. This is, of course, extremely dangerous because, you know, that nuclear facility and the, the fuel in it, it's stored, it, they need to continually cool it in, in order to avoid another radiation catastrophe. So Ukrainian officials are asking for a ceasefire in order to allow them to repair whatever's causing this issue. Um, In addition, without humanitarian aid, it's unlikely that the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv is going to stand much longer because the city's mayor says that they have enough supplies to last only one to two weeks. Um, The city of Mariupol is also in dire straits. Russian forces have them surrounded. They've been steadily shelling everybody in the city for days now because of this. Um, they have no power. They have no water. They, I mean, they're freezing. They're hungry. They, they have no food. Um, and they've also had to create a mass grave site in the cemetery where they're literally just depositing the bodies of civilians and soldiers killed by the Russians. They also said that this is due to the fact that between the war, you know, deaths from the war, and then deaths from other causes, just natural causes, diseases, or what have you, the morgues are overflowing. Some of these people, they don't even know who they are. They're just collecting bodies and putting them in this mass grave. Now, on the fighting front, Ukraine has announced that any foreign fighters who assist Ukraine will automatically be granted Ukrainian citizen citizenship. But For some of the people who are trying to leave the country, they're running into some trouble. There's a new report that says that some people who are trying to flee Ukraine and come to America are running into an unforeseen roadblock, which is that families with babies are unable to enter the U.S. because the babies don't have a visa yet. So there's now this bipartisan push on the Biden administration to make some changes so that these people can get in. So Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, said this is something that they're looking at. Um, Of course, you know, the vast amount of Ukrainian people have and will continue to seek refuge in neighboring countries. But there's bound to be Ukrainians who maybe have friends or family here in the States. And so this gives them their best chance of either rebuilding their lives here or at least having some sort of security and stability while they wait it out and see if they can return at some point. Um, There's also more news about the corporate backlash to Putin's invasion. Starbucks, Pepsi, and Disney are now among more than 300 companies that have suspended business in Russia. Starbucks operates in Russia through a licensing partner called the Alshaya Group, and there are 130 stores in the country, and so they're all going to be shut down. They're also halting any shipments of Starbucks products from Russia, and they committed to, quote, provide support to their approximately 2,000 employees in Russia, whatever that means. Pepsi also announced that they'll be suspending manufacturing and sales of Pepsi Cola and 7-Up in Russia. However, they're still planning to manufacture milk, baby formula, and baby food in the country. And they said that they're doing that to keep their workers employed. In another related corporate news story, uh, Tesla has sent an email to their employees in Europe the Middle East and the African region saying that if these employees, if any of them are asked, you know, if they're Ukrainian nationals, if they're asked to return to Ukraine to fight Russian forces, Tesla is going to pay them for at least three months. And Tesla plans to revisit the matter after three months to determine if they need to extend this. 
Um, no word on whether or not Tesla is going to make this offer to employees in other parts of the world, but I'll let you know if they, they do and any changes occur. And speaking of other parts of the world, you know, China has kind of been trying to stay out of it, it appeared. And they, they're still not helping Putin directly, but the country is now deleting any accurate coverage of the war. And they're also taking down any story that shows any kind of sympathy for Ukraine or Ukrainians' position. They're also helping to push the false narrative that we here in the U.S. have biological weapons in Ukraine. I mean... I, I don't think the, U, the Chinese government should be accusing other people of trying to use bioweapons when they appear to have accidentally infected the world with COVID due to their ghetto safety measures and ineptitude. Just saying. So anyway, according to leaked documents, the Chinese government has told Chinese media outlets to avoid posting anything negative about Russia or anything that's pro-Western. And Axios News Outlet says that online comments of anyone expressing sympathy for Ukraine are being deleted in China. But pro-Putin and anti-NATO or anti-US posts are being pushed and allowed to stand. You know, and these same ideas, these pro-Russian ideas, anti-NATO ideas are actually being promoted by Chinese state media. But it appears Russian residents may want to know what's actually going on. And they found a way now to get around Russia's censorship because Newsweek is reporting that Russian citizens are downloading virtual private network apps so they can surf the internet without restriction. So these VPNs hide the user's IP address, so it, it makes it more difficult to track who they are. It also gives the user the ability to view restricted websites and to use streaming services that are available in other countries. And they spoke with a VPN research group that said between February 24th and March 8th, VPN downloads increased by 1,092%. Huge. So I have a feeling that that's going to increase more and more, uh, you know, as deceased soldiers' bodies are sent back home. And it's bound to get a lot worse for them, financially speaking, in Russia. According to a Morgan Stanley's head of emerging market sovereign credit strategy, it's a man named Simon Weaver. He said that Russia could default on their national debts as early as the middle of April. So in just over a month from now, and he said it's unlikely that any other lending institution is going to be willing to lend them more money to bail them out because they don't see that the situation is going to turn around anytime soon. They see Russia's not backing down, so it's only going to get worse. And to make matters worse for them, Biden is said to now be considering a ban on Russia uranium imports. That's one of Russia's biggest exports. And so that ban will undoubtedly deal another significant blow to their economy. Um, last but not least, I want to share possibly the most ignorant article I think I've seen yet regarding the war in Ukraine or any commentary about it. Daily Beast journalist Ruben Navarrete Jr. wrote an article titled, Americans are going to have to get tougher to help Ukraine. In it, Navarrete makes the case that the U.S. military is made up of volunteers. And he says, you know, the people in uniform are just to do what they're told. You know, if we have to send people over to fight Russian forces, is what he alludes to, then so be it. And he said, quote, heaven help us if we get to the point where our desire to bubble wrap Generation Z extends to those who serve in uniform. Really? How about the fact that we just got out of a 20-year war? unwinnable war in Afghanistan? How about all of the other wars that preceded that? How many lives have been lost? How many billions and trillions of dollars have been wasted? And why is he pushing this, this idea, you may ask? 
Why is he pushing to send young men and women to yet another country where they will likely be killed? Because of high gas prices, of course. Navarrete goes on and on first about how Americans aren't willing to suffer for the greater good. And then he says, quote, personally, I am already feeling the pain at the pump. Some of the highest prices in the country are in Southern California where I live. Really? Really? Other people aren't willing to suffer, but you're going to bitch about your high gas prices as a reason for sending young, late teen, early 20-year-olds to their likely death. Really? Hypocritical much? Then he goes on to say, quote, Americans are no longer in the mood to make sacrifices, not real sacrifices anyway. Our definition these days of what constitutes a sacrifice would seem laughable when compared to sacrifices being made by other human beings around the globe. Uh, yeah, guy. And it seems like you're at the front of that pathetic line of people unwilling to make sacrifices. Oh, my God. Is this guy going to enlist? Is he going to have one of his children enlist? Is he going to sacrifice life and limb in Ukraine? And does he have any common sense, any brain cells to understand that what he's talking about here is potential nuclear war, a third world war with nukes? Seriously, this guy is the epitome of a tough talking keyboard warrior. And he ends his article saying, quote, on the global playground, those who don't push back get pushed around. And Americans, many of whom are used to comfort, won't find that arrangement very comfortable. You know what else won't be too comfortable? Nuclear annihilation. No one is going to give a damn about their comfort, about their gas prices when they're vomiting uncontrollably and their skin is literally melting off their bodies. I, you know, I don't have all the answers, but this guy clearly doesn't. But he's writing like he does. So irresponsible. There's got to be other avenues. There's got to be other means of changing things, of bringing this war to an end with as little loss of life as possible um, and helping the Ukrainian people to fight back. But I don't believe that sending our young men and women over there is in any way, shape or form prudent. It will end in disaster. All right, guys, I'll keep you updated. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.